So cloud computing, what is it? Um, these days, whenever I look for a definition of something, I naturally turn to Wikipedia, uh, for better or for worse. And the definition that, that Wikipedia provides is, um, is somewhat wordy uh, and, and, and gives a reasonable description of what cloud computing might be. So the keywords they're looking at um, dynamically scalable, often virtualized, provided as a service over the internet. Um, users don't need to have knowledge of or expertise in or control over the technology infrastructure in the cloud that supports them. Now, this definition is, is kind of wishy-washy, and, and one, what I've found is that a much easier way of actually assessing whether something might be cloud computing or not is using the following three-point definition. Uh, this is from a guy called George Rees, um, who's written a, a rather good book about cloud application architectures. So the first point is, is the service accessible via a web browser or via a web services API? Uh, the second point, does it take zero capital expenditure to get started? And the third point, you only pay what you use as you use it. If something meets those three points, then it pretty much is cloud computing. Now, it's not the most rigid definition in the world. If you have to pay $100 up front or $1,000 up front, it doesn't mean it's not cloud computing. But this is the kind of, of, of sort of what you should be looking for if something is cloud computing. So maybe another even sort of simpler analogy of, of what cloud computing is, is uh, this sort of concept of back in the old days uh, when you had a, your large factory, uh, you'd generate your own power. You'd build yourself a water wheel, you'd have your own little coal plant, you'd generate power at the factory and, and, and power your factory that way. Then obviously the, the utility grid arrived uh, and you basically purchased your power um, as a utility service. You basically paid for what you needed when you needed it and sort of on demand. And that's in a sense what cloud computing is. I guess a key point here is it's not just a technology change. Uh, what utility, uh, I guess electricity utility has done also changed the market for purchasing power. And in the same way, cloud computing really changes the way that you buy IT and how you can realize IT systems. And so what, I've, what I've found was I'd be going out to clients and I'd be talking to clients about cloud computing. And um, it would turn out that we'd be having cross-purpose conversations. Someone would be talking about one part of cloud computing and I'd be talking about another. And the reason for that is that I've come up with something called the cloud continuum, which I think helps sort of show that, that there are a range of services across, um, that you can look across. And so looking at cloud computing, I'll try and use the magical laser pointer for those on this side of the room. Uh, sort of down the end here, we have our traditional offerings uh, of, um, that aren't really cloud at all. So we have sort of the tin, your servers, where you've traditionally just bought a server, put software on it, and, and, and gone from there. More recently, things like virtualization um, have come, come to the fore, but traditionally they're still being run uh, in a standard fashion just with virtualized um, hardware. So really, the bottom end of the cloud continuum is IaaS, or infrastructure as a service. This is where you're basically paying on demand for virtualized computing resources. Uh, so you're basically paying for a virtual machine effectively and paying an hourly rate. Coming up, uh, the, the sort of growing area of platform as a service. Uh, this is where, rather than having to worry about the virtual machines and the operating systems um, of, of the solution, you really are taking um, application components and deploying them into the platform. And, and, the, and the provider of the platform handles all the complexity of running and managing that infrastructure. And then at the top end of the continuum, the software as a service. This is probably the area that most people are familiar with, and this is the area that I'll, I'll talk the most about today. Uh, this is really sort of the on-demand business applications. So before I go into a bit more detail on software as a service, uh, some more on platform as a service. Um, as I said, this is a very uh, growing area in, in the industry. Um, Microsoft have made a major play uh, in the platform as a service space with their Microsoft Azure platform. Uh, and they've done a fantastic job of providing a platform where you can effectively take .NET um, applications and deploy them up into, into the Microsoft Azure cloud. Now the beauty of this is that your, your application runs um, and you don't have to worry about how many servers, you don't have to provision servers. Through a web browser, you can basically say, I want eight more web servers to, to, to scale to meet demand. Uh, and there's a range of other offerings in that area, and I think this is an area where we're going to see significant growth in the coming years. Infrastructure as a service, um, there's a number of, 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 of different offerings out there. The most common and well-known one is one um, from Amazon called Amazon EC2. And this provides um, basically virtual, virtual machines as well as a range of different networking and, and sort of database services that, that go with it. Now, when you're looking at realizing a, a sort of a business solution, uh, what, you, what you can do is you obviously join together a range of different um, solutions across, across the continuum. So a recent uh, case study uh, that, that we have with Mighty River Power 
is around taking elements of software as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service, and building those together to create a, um, a complete end-to-end -end solution, using the power of each solution in the most appropriate way. Um, so let's look at some of the other examples. Uh, it's sort of in the software as a service side, just sort of give some, some, some feel as to some of the names that are out there. Obviously, uh, Google Apps, uh, Microsoft Business Productivity Online Suite, which is um, Exchange and, and, um, and things like that. Uh, Salesforce.com is, the, is the, probably one of the most well-known names in the area of software as a service with their on-demand CRM. And interestingly, what Salesforce.com have done is they've moved down into the platform as a service space. So traditionally a CRM provider, now you can actually write your own custom applications and deploy them onto the force.com platform and not have to worry about infrastructure or anything like that. And another example, local, local example of software as a service would be, would be zero. And uh, the list could go on and on, so I won't try and um, go through them all. So what I want to talk about today is really more about software as a service. And, and the reason for that is that um, platform as, as a service and infrastructure as a service are very um, important topics. Uh, but um, are quite specialised, um, the, the answer and, and sort of the detail of that is quite specific to the organisation and what you're trying to achieve. Whereas to my mind, software as a service is accessible uh, uh, now and, and to anyone. Uh, typically, uh, software as a service is line of business applications, so examples there, mail, um, CRM, collaboration, HR, accounting. Uh, typically, the, the pricing model is usually a per user per month uh, charging model, uh, often with tiers of extra, of extra money around storage or bandwidth or other aspects like that. Um, a great uh, feature of software as a service is the sort of centralised feature updating. There's no need for patching, um, the features are available immediately to the end users. Uh, anyone who's been in an organisation and sat there on an old version of a piece of software uh, wishing that uh, the IT team would go out and actually upgrade to, um, to the software. You may be sitting on something that's five, ten years out of date. The IT team's too nervous to upgrade um, the software because of what that involves. With software as a service, you'll basically come in overnight and there'll be a new feature sitting there um, ready for you to use. Uh, Google's an excellent example of that. I think they send for about two new features a week. Uh, companies like um, Salesforce.com will have sort of quarterly release cycles with major new features coming out and they're available without any need for upgrade on demand and typically for no extra cost. So software as a service is, is very interesting and in that what it means is that because you're paying a per user per month fee or similar, it means that small, small enterprises have access to the kind of features that don't, typically only a large scale enterprise would have access to. So you can be using the same CRM that Starbucks use for your small two, three person organisation. The same kind of features and, and, and productivity and process improvements that um, those large enterprises enjoy are available to you because of, of that sort of per user scaling. Saying that though, with software as a service, because you're basically taking um, the applications up being managed and all the complexities being managed by someone else, there's some limits to what you can do. Uh, you typically there's quite limited customization that's available, um, and any custom or if, if there is customization available, often it's quite proprietary to the solution. Therefore, uh, if looking at a software as a service solution, you need to basically make sure that the solution you choose is meeting the requirements that, that, you, that you have for the product. If not, you'll need to start looking down at the platform as a service layer and possibly creating your own solution to go up into the cloud. Uh, a number of providers do offer both um, SaaS and installed versions of their software. Um, Microsoft would be the most noteworthy there, uh, giving you the choice as to whether you deploy in the cloud or whether you, you do it on premise. So in terms of, I mean, I was trying to think of what's a good example of a company using software as a service, and I kind of realised that um, our company uh, actually is a very good example. Now obviously um, I spend my days going around talking about cloud computing, but at the end of the day, most of the 150 plus people in our organisation, we were a software delivery company, we have the standard challenges and, and, um, of running a business and of, of having, trying to have the IT systems and processes that allow us to gain new work, bill our clients and, and be productive. Uh, so we've embraced software as a service, um, and some examples of where we use software as a service, we use Google Apps as our mail and collaboration platform. Uh, we've been using Salesforce.com for a number of years now for our CRM and opportunity management. Uh, we use a product called Sonar6, um, which is a New Zealand company, which is an HR uh, sort of, I don't know if you could call it talent management, but it basically manages our performance reviews and helps um, with that. Uh, we use OpenAir, which is a, um, a time sheeting and, um, and sort of invoicing solution. 
and we use a product called Beetle, uh, which is an incident management for our help desk. And I think there's probably a couple of others. But this is just examples of where we've naturally picked up over time um, various solutions that have meant that we can take complexity of our organisation. Also, we've got a very mobile um, workforce. I mean, we're often out on client sites, so having software that we can access from anywhere, from home, uh, from overseas is quite important. So, um, so yeah, so that's, that's an example of us using software as a service ourselves.